Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing some previously discussed super powerful features in my Bobcat packages, and we're going to be doing it in a different way. Now I'm giving you a visualization utilizing a video format of a project that Zach and I have been working on. Um, Zach actually just started his own YouTube channel. He's only got 11 subscribers, and I'm really hoping that all the love you've shown me, you guys show him and at least check out his channel, whether you're using Bobcat or not. He's a wealth of information, super guy. And again, um, for many of you who are starting a business or the more advanced hobbyist, you're definitely gonna wanna check this out because what, what he actually did here and what I actually did uh, to actually get to this level, it represents just where we're going with the future of manufacturing. So just to give you a brief overview of what was actually done, um, I had a client's project that came in. Um, I, he gave me an individual part that would have required a lot of geometrical scaling and again, taking measurements, um, recording different things, different angles and whatnot. And so what we wanted to do is reverse engineer the part that he gave us in the quickest possible time. Well, I invested in a high-end 3D scanner. And so what we wanted to do is take the scan of the part so it would alleviate all the drawing time, give us all the accurate dimensions, and just import it into Bobcad so we could do any type of manipulating that would, would be required if it was required and be able to produce the part. Well, uh, Zach and I were working on it. I did the full scan on the file and Zach actually pulled it into Bobcad and you can see exactly what was done here. Now his video is only three minutes long, so I'm gonna play it and you guys can check out the result. So today I'm, I'm running through this part real quick. It's a part that was actually scanned and this is the model that came into Bobcad. <clears throat> so I haven't touched this at all. Haven't done any edits to it or anything. So. It's a pretty big deal because on something like this, you can take it, and if, if you have a part, and it's this isn't too crazy, but if you got something that's a little more complicated that would take a long time to try to reverse engineer, so to speak, and to get it in here as a model, this will save you a ton of time. And again, I haven't I haven't made any changes to the model itself. I have a few tool paths put in here just so you can kind of see how powerful this could be in certain situations. So I'm gonna, I'll run the simulation real quick just to show you. So I'm gonna do the profile, I'll wipe that slot out, and then I'm doing that groove. So it's kind of like maybe a, what you consider a first stop on this part. But let's run through that real quick. And on something like this, we would, I can, I can um, manipulate that model as I wanted to because I can select all the edges, I can do anything to it, and I'll, I'll show you when we back out of this. It is pretty awesome that it came in um, accurate and I was able to use the model itself to to get edges and run this toolpath as needed. Again, if you have kind of a tricky part that you wouldn't want to sit down and try to take a ton of measurements and you may not be able to get accurate measurements on it, we're able to scan it and then it comes in a bobcat just like this. So I'm going to let this run here for probably another 30 or 45 seconds and this is a tiny part so these tools are tiny but this stands true for any part within reason you know we can do massive parts okay just slow that down a little but that's it so we say I'll, I'll call this a first op but again this model came in I haven't done anything to it no changes at all. I just started selecting the edges and running the toolpath. So let me show you just so like here I, I've already extracted a bunch of edges and took some dimensions on it. Extract the edge so you can select all these individual surfaces or edges, which is all you really need to be able to do. I mean, when it comes down to running toolpaths, because I know it, we, we were getting STLs in at first and. It's a little trickier to work with because you can't you can't do this right here pull pull surfaces or edges off and now that we can um, we're able to again scan a part pull it in here uh, change it if we need if or if you want to um, but if not that's fine because we can run toolpaths on this so 
feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about this or you know if you have something in mind that you need done and we can take a look at it and figure it out so you guys just can see exactly as he said nothing was manipulated I mean the file came in you were able to select all your edges if you had to modify anything and you were literally able to go in scale check your scaling check everything that you want to make sure matches up to the original and run your toolpath create your toolpath check your simulator and you're ready to go to town um, again super super powerful uh, business owners I know you guys are probably looking at this and getting tons of ideas um, if you're thinking you know anything now with technology where you have a one-off part uh, a classic part antique parts parts that are extremely hard to find you now literally um, with the technology we readily have available many of you already know that that you can just reverse engineer virtually anything and using this format, I can honestly say that it was this one of the simplest projects we've done. Um, Zach actually went back in, um, and we've been working on this for quite some time. He went back in and we checked the different file formats. Like he said, we used STL. STL works well, but you do require the Bob Art module, which of course with my packages you get. Um, but once you go into the different file formats, you can then start manipulating um, the different edges. And as long as you can select an edge like he stated you are able to generate that toolpath which is critical because whenever we do reverse engineering you definitely want to make sure that scalability is correct you want to make sure that any modifications you need to do you'd like to be able to do in the cam software without using another go-between program to modify and articulate this video I hope reaches the right people because again I've had many clients ask me about you know what's possible in reverse engineering I've already discussed Bobcat's capability to do picture to vectorization where you're essentially reverse engineering an image but in this format you're actually reverse engineering 3d objects which is again that's the holy grail of micro manufacturing because you're basically saying you can produce virtually anything depending the size and scale matches your equipment. So again, I hope this video has been intriguing. Once again, check out Zach's channel. It's under Zach Alexander. Once again, wealth of knowledge. He just started his channel. Um, for you guys getting involved with CAD CAM, you couldn't be learning from someone better. He's really, I tell you, he's a great guy, super easy to learn from, and he'll work with you. So if you guys have any questions, if you'd like to schedule training with Zach, let me know, um, and we can go from there or contact him directly. Um, and again, if you have any questions about Bobcat, you can ask him or I. Um, again, this video, I hope it will just enlighten you guys to just how powerful we're talking about, once again, with a direct scan right into the program. I mean, it's it doesn't get much easier than that. So again, thank you all to all my subscribers. Of course, I love you. I appreciate you. Um, and uh, if you guys do have any questions, you know my door is always open. It's storm2313 at gmail.com is my direct email. Um, you can also contact me at my eDealers Direct store on eBay. And of course, I'll put that information in the link below. Thank you, guys.